So I'll start um, a little bit before that because how I got there onto the stage, onto the world stage, onto the global stage was um, being in the entertainment industry as an actress. And I had been acting for already probably 20 years when this uh, situation happened in 2005. I was at an audition. I had had a great career. I had been on two television series, a series regulars. I had done multiple movies, commercials. I uh, modeled for 10 years and I had done quite a bit of work. And um, I showed up at an audition one day and I panicked. Like I had a serious panic attack. I couldn't remember the lines. I couldn't remember how to move from one mark to another in front of the camera. And I was like, wow, what just happened? And that was so strong in me that I went home and I called my agent and I said, don't send me out anymore. Wow. And they, of course, freaked out because the time of year it was, there was a season called pilot season, which is when every studio started casting for pilots for television series. And I said, don't send me out again. Whoa, are you kidding? And I had no plan. I just knew I wasn't going to be doing that. That thing that felt so out of balance and so contradictory to whatever was happening in my soul. I just, I, I just, as much as I loved being in front of the camera, I loved the industry. I loved being part of the team of, of being on a production. I just couldn't do it. And I didn't know what was next. And I had to sit and go, okay, what's next? And I had already come through the program, the first program in T. Harvecker's camp of the Millionaire Mind Intensive. And I loved it. And the energy was all high and it was really great. And I thought, this is really wonderful. But that was kind of uh, sort of it. And I had volunteered a couple times. And at that time when I left acting, I went, okay, what's next? And I went back to volunteer and do some stuff. And I went, oh, this actually feels good. This feels good. And one of the trainers at the time had said to me, so when are you going to get on stage? And I was like, is that an invitation? (laughs) Or a challenge. (laughs) Or a challenge. Like, was that an invitation? And I said, he said, well, I don't have that kind of power, but you should consider this and pursue this. So I started to pursue that and ended up being an assistant trainer. Well, I will take that back. I was on the crew first. And then I became an assistant trainer and then I became a trainer for this company, full on, full blown trainer in 2006, started in 2005 as an assistant trainer, train, 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 train. And then in 2006 became the first female trainer for the company, the first black person to train for the company. And in that pursuit, you know, I was asked by the head of the company, what do you want to teach? And I said, I want to teach Enlightened Warrior Training Camp because it felt like that energy for me of teaching people to step into their power was right. And of course, because he hadn't had a woman on stage before, let alone a woman of color, right? (laughs) He um, was like, well, I don't know about that. Uh, I, I don't, I don't know. And something happened, situation happened where the lead trainer was like, yeah, I can't do this. I just happened to be there and stepped right on the stage. Did three camps that summer, um, was out of the norm for the blueprint of the company 
So spent a few years trying to regain some footing after being told, oh, well, I don't know what to do with you. I was like, wow, okay. So that's interesting. And kind of got put in sort of this holding pattern. And I was like, well, I'm kind of dying on the vine here. And one of the participants in the camp who had already taken it, volunteered, was there when I did my first camp. She was like, that's it. I'm going to support this woman hands down no matter what. While she happened to be teaching a course called Discovering Your Sacred Gifts. Oh. And, and in 2007, I said, that's it. I'm going to go take this. Flew to Vancouver, Canada, took Discovering Your Sacred Gifts and was like, oh, okay, I get it now, yep. right? I had a whole new way of looking at how I was operating in life. And it really did take a few... Um, it took me three years of just actually embodying when I discovered the gifts that I did have. And even more importantly, the gifts that I didn't have. It took the weight off of having to live into the gifts that I knew I didn't have, didn't have the energy for, and could just say, you know what, those aren't my gifts. Yes, I can still participate in the understanding of them, the application of them, but they're not mine to embody. So I can pursue the ones that are my set of gifts and not feel guilty about those that aren't mine. Yeah. As if I have to be all and everything for everybody and carry that massive burden and weight, which sometimes we can do in society. Like, and, and, you, and you would say, you know, when I've heard you speak, if it's not your gift, you use a skill. So you were, you were using totally. your skills to, to teach what someone else's gift was. Yes. Like you didn't have that gift, so you couldn't embody that in full authenticity and integrity, which is where we're going to end up, I'm sure. So, But yeah. you had the skill to go and do these things, offer lesson totally. plan, offer this, offer that. And with your mm -hmm. gift, you could match that to the skill and still carry it through. Yeah. And really, when I got that understanding, it made everything I did on stage that much more powerful. So for anyone watching this right now, what is the Sacred Gifts program? You did it, took you three years to embody it, and now you're living yeah. it. What is Sacred Gifts? This process, I've and I've seen it over and over and over again. Tons of people say, oh, well, I know my skills, I know my gifts, I know what I'm doing, I know where I'm at, I know my, um, you know, I know what I want to pursue, I know what makes me happy, which is awesome. It's great, it's fantastic. I have done this process for individuals, for entrepreneurs, for veterans, for um, corporations. And everyone always says the same thing. Like, wow, I knew I had gifts, but I didn't actually know that there was a formula yeah. to putting them in place yeah. so that I can live my life feeling on purpose. Because being on purpose and feeling on purpose are two very different things. Yep. And that's what happens in the program is we discover the formula. We discover how do I get to feeling on purpose every day in my life? And if I'm not feeling on purpose, what part of the formula is out of balance so yep. that I can get back into feeling on purpose? Yep. 